Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP. This is issue 173 of Money Trucker Magazine, May 2006. We've got a lot to talk about. Whether you realize it or not, this is a super iconic cover. This is, I'm going to butcher it, Masario Shurato, 1973 Toyota Stout RK101. Uh, that goes by Samurai Spirits. It's the first international cover shot in Japan. Now, if you, you may recall, there was a Mazda on the cover that was not shot by Lance, but it was contributed from overseas. So it technically, it technically wasn't the first overseas model or, or truck, if you will, on the cover, but it was the first shot in Japan. Uh, there's three models on the cover that you can see here. Mike Alexander's 11th credited cover. Now stick with me to the end. I'm going to talk about a fun fact about the wheels uh, that will kind of tie into something that I think is, is important to kind of mention. Uh, this is one of one Toyota Stouts on the cover. One more fun fact. It's the second oldest truck to appear on the cover after Scott Rupp's blue NL320, which we're going to see on issue 189. That was a 64, of course. This is a 73. There was a 75, a 76, and a 77 for uh total uh, additional to the two that I mentioned. So there are six total trucks from the 70s, if that makes sense, that land on the cover, and this is one of them. So we can see here, cool little insert photo there, welding, that famous uh, welding helmet there, and you see just an awesome truck. I think this truck, many truckers don't get the credit where deserved, in my opinion. I've said this a lot, but I think also if you think about this truck, May 2006, over you know, going on, I can't believe it, almost 20 years ago, you know, look at the look of it. It's not painted. Look at the wheels, you know, look at the style that was brought in. And obviously this isn't a U.S. Uh, cover, but, you know, let's tip our cap to the worldwide mini truckers. And that's what Mike Alexander is doing here as the editor-in-chief to this publication. So again, I'll share a fun fact about the wheels towards the end, but enough with ODB's crazy mindless stuff in my head or stuff I want to talk about uh, you can see here uh, this month's cover very unique first cover shot in Japan which Mike is correct there I butchered the name I apologize we'll see him driving the truck later it's a 73 stout and of course Mike Alexander gets the credit you've got a few others I mean you can kind of just look at this and tell that it's not a U.S. truck just because of the tag and things like that and that's what I've seen also in the bagged magazines, which are from Australia. Eventually, I'll cover those in more detail. I have most, if not all, of those issues. And uh, to the many supporters, we've got folks in New Zealand, Japan, Australia, uh, you name it, that, that support and listen to OLP or like our content or, you know, appreciate what we're doing. Uh, we can't thank them enough. Now, I am not going to attempt to mention uh, these gentlemen's names. Uh, you got a 92 Toyota pickup and a 94 Toyota Hilux, okay, because I'm, I'm not going to butcher any more names. But this was uh, shot by Mike Alexander, Chad Lucas did the write-up, Japan represent, and a very, very cool layout uh, in terms of this construction zone feature. Uh, Mike was able to start traveling globally. We'll see a little bit of that, a little of the shenanigans in here with some of the photos, and that was super cool. Um, here you have by Chad Lucas, uh, photography again, Mike, and uh, this is going to be more than likely, it looks like, yeah, international. Uh, there you can see the tag and pretty cool truck, something a little bit different. Again, styles were a little bit different. It's uh, mind-blowing to me if you think about how much uh, the folks from Japan and, and some of these different areas, primarily Japan comes to mind, that they kind of mimic the U.S., uh, in terms of some of the garages and some of the builds and the styles, the streetwear, um, a lot of that you'll see if you follow some of the Instagram pages from California. There's a guy, 64 Kamal, I think it's K-A-M-A-L. I wrote the feature for his body dropped 64 Impala for a Mike Slam magazine many years ago, and I follow him closely. Here's a TIG welding wisdom. And... Um, What's cool is to see, you know, his garage and some of the garages there. Like I mentioned, they're they're set up in a way that kind of looks like an American type garage, and it's just, you know, they love the stuff. Um, I love it too. Some of the annual trucking, all trucking nats. 
So you can see here a little bit has changed since, you know, these write ups because, you know, I would read this content. But if you think about where the magazines have went now, especially if it's whether it's street trucks, you know, all time low has shuttered many truckings coming back for those that don't know. Um, a lot of it now is, is photo. It's mostly photo. So like if you look here, I mean, there was a pretty big write up on this. Uh, if this was a current magazine, you'd see just a ton of of photos. Um, but uh, that's just how the landscape has changed a little bit over the course of time. I don't know that it's people don't want to read as much. I, I think that's part of it. But at the same time, you know, we're visual type people. And that's why I think Instagram and Facebook and online is, there's a lot of good to it. There's a lot of bad. I think it takes away. I was talking to someone about the fact, uh, I think it was Jeff Gaudet, And we were talking about how, uh, it may have been someone else, how shows, you go to a show and you know a lot of the vehicles are going to be there because you've seen it on Instagram and it kind of sucks. Uh, this is Toe Pig, which uh, I really credit Jerry Lewis with kind of coining that phrase. Uh, his C3500 was known as Toe Pig, and this is James Jabbit Abbott. No joke. Check that out. James, his nickname must have been Jabbit. Just a cool nickname. New South Wales, Australia down under uh, pretty cool layout pretty cool truck again you can see the styles were uh, similar but different you know that's a huge fuel tank uh, if you don't know in Australia they have a lot of rules and regulations around uh, bagging things having engineer plans you know think about the stuff you got to do to build a home in most states in America you know you have to have permitting and things you have to have similar type regulatory stuff down under. But again, you can see, you know, some of the some of the things that you can immediately look at this truck and go, okay, yeah, this isn't from the U.S. Uh, it's not that it's not done right. Uh, it certainly is awesome, Colorado Custom Steering Wheel. It's just a little bit different flavor. Of course, right hand drive. You know, maybe a wheel that you wouldn't see as much in the U.S. And uh, this, you know, super cool suicide doors. Uh, this is a mod that um, my old friend Russ did many years ago. Matt uh, did it on the truck. It just popped in my head. Never really see guys do this. You know, taking the door striker that's typically, right? I want to make sure I'm saying this right because maybe I'm saying it wrong. No normally, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe that is stock. But I remember Matt one time took the door striker and flipped it. So... Um, I think that's what he did. So instead of seeing the unsightly stuff here, the door striker ended up here. So I don't know. That just popped in my head. But cool mod. Keep on keeping on. Bagging the rear of a Tacoma. Now I don't know what I'm talking about. That was a cool mod, Matt. Here's rendering of the month. Super cool. You can't go wrong with the Tacoma. Joel's. That awesome construction zone feature. Uh, January uh, 06. And you can see here a couple cool things. The dragger of the month. They really expanded the section over time. And this was a good section to add. If you think back to some of those early issues, you know, they had the clothing and some of the lifestyle type things. But, you know, we, mini truckers, we really expanded, you know, everything from renderings to dragging. Tattoos is a big part. Um, you know, different mods. Uh, that's, again, part in part why we call our podcast Our Lifestyle Podcast. I know some people probably look at that and go, Our Lifestyle? What is that? That's some weird stuff. No, it's the lifestyle we live, which is mini truckers. Samurai Spirits. So here is, again, a patina truck. Dare I say the P word, patina. You've got the three models. I believe it's the first time we saw three models um, going off the top of my head without really even looking. That just kind of popped in my head. But super cool. And you can see, again, when you look at the truck here, I think, you know, because of the women, you know, you're just like, wow, three chicks. And then you're like, okay, a patina truck, steely wheels. Um, but there you get a chance to see kind of the cool pullout poster. We'll see, of course, the feature. The pullout poster, um, as I've said, has to be in the middle because you can bend those staples. Uh, of course, the feature, if the feature wasn't right there, it's going to be further. And it's going to be, I think, on page 70 it was. Japan Tour 2005, so you can just see all the epicness. I got a chance to meet a local finesse guy on Instagram, local finesse, maybe 1982 might be his Instagram. And he came all the way from Japan to Lone Star Throwdown, and he was super cool. There's Mike. I think that was Josh Freeman next to him. I think he went. But there's a huge uh, cult following, as, as you guys know. Uh, in 
uh, Japan. And if you think about the trucks many of us love, including the one that's on the cover, there's Ernie, rest in peace. He was on that road trip. Josh repping Severed, Makoto, Makoto. He's helped me a lot over the course of time there. There's Mike getting a tattoo, like just a super cool thing, you know, a full size in there. But, um, you know, you just think about the trucks that many of us love are imported trucks, right? From, and, and if you really think about uh, mini truck and uh, Ernie, he, rest in peace, he wrote an article about, you know, mini trucks uh, started in the late 50s, believe it or not. Um, I think some people, you know, we think of old school mini truck and we're thinking of like a 77 or the Vanner guys. And absolutely, you know, they have a huge part in all of that. But if you really go back and you look at mini trucks, uh, you know, born out of Japan. So, you know, to show love to Japan and, and do this world tour, you know, that's a key thing. Check out the front end on, on the left. Something a little crazy. Kind of reminds you of Josh Freeman's. This truck goes on to grace the cover. It was also on a cover of Truck Trends, which uh, is, we'll talk more about this truck, but it, it, it uh, graces two covers, one here, of course. Here's the MIC truck that they mentioned. Uh, that guy, he follows us on Instagram. He still owns it. Uh, when that truck, you know, went to Cal Truck Jam and then Boom was shipped overseas, it was in that era when that was happening a lot. But it's super cool that, the, you know, some of these trucks uh, continue to uh, exist. Uh, one of a uh, local guy here just got married. Shout out to him. He sold me my Mazda. He's over. Uh, he just visited Moon Eyes and he's doing a huge uh, tour over in Japan with him and his new wife. Uh, they've been together a long time. Cool dude. But um, that just made me think of because Moon Eyes has those. That might be one of theirs has those uh, Hilux trucks, the Dooleys. Five years and two million yen. Might be the most expensive truck number-wise. Uh, what I mean by that is two million. It sounds like a lot, but no, I cannot convert that in uh, off the top of my head. Does anybody know how much uh, the U.S. dollars that would be now? Uh, Samurai Spirits. Again, there's the name on the right with the little grid that they would do. 73 Stout RK101 and uh, from Japan couple things that stick out, again, you've got the stock steely wheels, you've got a patina truck, you've got the chrome front end, right-hand drive. Very, very cool truck. And we just didn't get a lot of this um, because of the geographic situation, right? Uh, now with the magazines and Dropbox and all of these different, you know, file sharing type stuff, I mean, you could easily run features from overseas, but... You know, and in this era, I mean, you kind of could, right? I mean, but it took, for the most part, uh, Mike shooting this. I guess you could say it was the first cover shot by mini truck and staff outside the country. Because the Mazda that ran, that was doored, I believe it was, from Subculture. You know, that was a, a feature swap, which was super cool. Uh, Hell Taco and Still Going by Chad Lucas. Again, Mike Alexander shoots it. I think there's one name that comes to mind when you see this, and I really think this truck, keep me honest, I, I skimmed through the feature and I don't think it says it, but if you don't think of Mike Alexander, or excuse me, Mike Finnegan, when you see this truck, I don't know um, you know, what to say because I, I really do think there was kind of a nod in here color-wise to Mike Finnegan with his uh, taco. Super cool. you got the shaved corners. And uh, this would have been cool again. Globe trotting, doing a super cool, um, you know, just list of features, you know, shooting stuff. And then that kind of reminds me of Suicidal Toy. You know, different colors, obviously, not the zebra, but <clears throat> kind of some cool stuff going on there. Sixth annual scrape by the lake is another word that's used extensively, um, and it still is at shows. The word scrape. Here's a Ranger you don't really see a lot, um, topless Ranger, but also it's an extended cab. Or what do we call the, that? Okay, that's one off the top of my head. What do we call the extended cab Rangers? Extended cab is more of a GM term, right? Is it? I can't remember. It's been a long week. I've been crunching numbers at work. Uh, East Coast Cruise 2005. So you can see some of the party animals here. There's Oliver. He was recently on the Drop podcast. Always wanted to get Oliver on. 
And I, I hope in the future I can. I believe he's going to be at Mini Nats this year. Good dude. And I think he's he's back to the mindset of uh, finishing Pops' truck. His, his dad that's no longer with us. Rest in peace. Super cool. I definitely appreciate everybody that chimes in. You know, so many of you have said, hey, you know, I got into mini trucking with that issue. It's so cool that you can remember, you know, one of the homies that, that chimed in and said, man, I was studying that issue when my teacher kept yelling at me. I, I, I love it, man. It's it's cool. It kind of, you know, this magazine was a line in the sand for many of us. We kind of know when we got in based upon the issue. Uh, here, uh, this truck goes on, uh, Relax Atmosphere goes on to be on an anniversary issue of Street Trucks. Here you've got some media that literally we 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 transition really not many VHS tapes out there, but DVDs were such a huge part. And again, from a mini truck Hall of Fame perspective, I, I really want to make sure that once we start getting into the media aspect, moving from the '90s into the 2000s, that we uh, pay homage to the, so many people that contributed. Okay, so there's a couple uh, final showdown, kicking in old school. But here is, uh, remember last, uh, maybe the last one? I said Ben Smith or Benjamin Smith. This is, so I, I knew it. Ben inherited this truck from his dad. He's a second generation mini trucker. His son, great kid, um, is uh, a kind of third generation, if you will. If he decides to be a mini trucker, I claim him as one because I think Ben does. But shout out to Ben and his pops, and uh, this truck has been redone in blue. It was featured in Street Trucks a few years ago. It's got a lot of airbrush on it. Super cool. Love the truck, and hope to see Ben at Mini Nats or wherever he decides to take it next. Uh, Mini Truck and Graffiti. There's the three women on the cover. Some of the outtakes, if you will. That looks like Josh Freeman there with the severed hat. There's Courtney, rest in peace, and Oliver. Some shenanigans going on. And then Fender Bender Incorporated. And then there is... I, I Now I remember. I need to do the side-by-side -side to show you the broken glass versus the non. Because I think once I passed that, I forgot to go back and do that. So, this is issue 173. So, I promised I was going to come back to this. So, let me think here for a second. This was the fourth of four total cover trucks with stock wheels or AKA steelies. Okay. Uh, pri the pro one prior for an example is Sean Mahaney's 77 Toyota Hilux. Okay. Which is super cool to me because again, if you look, if you look at where we are now, there's a lot of patina stuff going on. The steel wheels became a huge thing. Uh, they still are uh, Detroit steel wheel co their whole brand is built on, steel wheels you know obviously um theirs are a little bit different than the stock looking wheel but featuring a lot of times the dog dish hub caps and things like that center caps uh which i think is awesome here's another fun fact one more and then we'll shut this down is so far this is the 48th toyota on the cover I forget if i mentioned that but that's roughly 28 percent so far so about a third give or take through 173 issues Toyota on the cover so pretty cool thank you for all the support stay on the rise and if you watch these all the way through I can't thank you enough we hope to see you I hope to see you at mini nats we'll be out there I'll be filming let's slap hands chop it up we are here peace